interested in moths. Thought about moth trapping, but a little bit unsure. What do I do? Where do I start? Well, come with me and I'll show you. So, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Martin Priestley. Um, I've been moth trapping now for 20 years, uh, I've possibly built a bit more. Uh, I'm also the wildlife uh, recorder for the local nature reserve here in Walmore in Bradford. Um, so, let's get started. The basically, there's two groups of moths. We've got the macro moths, which are the bigger, larger, and easier to identify moths. And then we've got the micro moths. Now, my advice would be, and um, because it worked well for me, is to start with the macro moths, purely and simply because they are easier. They tend to be a little bit more colourful to identify. The micro moths, trust me on this. You'll have to trust me on this that once you're bitten by the bug, you will certainly want to go on to the micro moths. But at this moment in time, I think you should just concentrate on the uh, macro moths. This is a really good book. I would advise anybody to get this book. Most mothers use this book. Full of really good uh, uh, plates, um, easy to identify and good information as well. There is also as well in, the, in this book, which you, it is very useful to learn, and that is all the the uh, topography of the of, of moths and all the descriptions of, of the moths as well which again you're going to have to learn but let's not worry about that at the moment so this is my uh, moth trap that i use um, it's a funnel uh, moth trap there's all sorts of various ones that you can get uh, robinson heath uh, traps there's all sorts of a range of moth traps but uh, i'm not really going to talk too much about buying a moth trap and which one to buy there's plenty of information on the on the internet about that but this is the one i use in my urban garden which is four miles from bradford city center i've recorded about 346 different species here in in this garden and the good thing about this it's 60 watts and it's quite neighbor friendly there isn't that uh, really really bright light so it just meets meets my uh, my needs that i need so let's let's tick it off and i can give you then uh, a bit of a closer look. Obviously what happens, the moths come along um, and they slide down here and then um, into this funnel here and then into the into the moth trap which you can see here. Um, but um, what we're going to talk about now is putting the egg boxes in. The whole idea is to try and create as many nooks and crannies as possible. So nicely putting in, creating all sorts of like nooks and crannies great word is that isn't it? nooks and oh great words nooks and crannies well that's what it's all about is creating these all these little places where the moths can can uh, get in and um, hide away uh, during the in the uh, during the night and stay safe not hurt themselves and be there in the morning then for for you to to uh, identify so and i like to put these at the side i'll show you uh, a bit better view uh, in a moment so we'll put these in. Um, this moth trap um, has been very successful for me. Um, so those are the egg boxes in now. As you can see, plenty of spaces for the moths to fly around without hurting themselves and hide behind here. This is not too high. The last thing you want is, let me just show you. The last thing you want is the egg box to be here so that when the moth falls in, it could actually get back out so you need a little bit of a good distance before before that first egg box right so we'll put the uh, we'll put the uh, lid back on as i say it's a nice perspex lid is this it's ideal for what i want we've got that good depth uh, um, behind so what i'll be doing i'll be putting the moth trap on um round about about half an hour after dark um, i don't moth trap every day um, you shouldn't do that because um, moths need to uh, to mate and to and to breed and, and feed. So uh, I'd probably do it uh, twice or maybe three times uh, at the most. But we'll talk about a little bit that, about that tomorrow and also recording the the, the, the moths as well. So it's um, an early start for me, an early to bed. So I shall see you in the morning with hopefully loads of moths. Morning. So here we are. We're going to open the moth trap. Uh, but just before we do, um, a little tip for you: um, no matter what moth trap you've got, always have a quick look round. 
Yeah, I mean, I've done this before, <laughs> before I've, I've filmed. But just have a quick look round, make sure there's nothing, uh, your prize moth that's just hanging in there. It's just gonna, gonna uh, fly away as soon as you touch it. And also as well, when we open the moth trap, some moths aren't gonna fly out, but let's do it quite gingerly. Let's just calm down rather than rushing in uh, and, and spoiling everything and all the prize moths flying out, hopefully. So we're gonna gently take off the uh, off the lid now and uh, we'll see what we have. Oh, we've got an emerald here uh, which hopefully might not fly off. But we'll let's uh, see what happens. There we go. So let's start to have a, have a look then. We seem to have a nice selection of, uh, of moths here. Um, We've got the heart and dart. Possibly the most common um, moth that you're going to find in your in your moth trap is the uh, a lovely uh, poplar heart moth. Very stunning moth is this. And there's a good uh, example of the uh, of the large yellow one doing something. You're going to have to get used to because it will be in the moth trap a lot. You see the small black pit marks close to the leading edge near the tip of the wing. Let's see if I can get it to move, get a better view. Um, this is the uh, light emerald. Very attractive uh, moth. The dark arch is clearly showing the, uh, the W mark near the outer edge is a cons constant um, characteristic of this moth. So we've got the smoky wing it's got. Nice straw coloured forewing. And you notice the, um, the sort of black and brown streak along the uh, whitey central vein is sort of finely streaked. And uh, these are one of the most uh, conspicuous uh, features of this particular moth. Ooh, now then, that's a nice one. That's um, a buff arches. Really attractive moth. How oh, anybody doesn't like moths is beyond me, but a really nice moth. And a nice moth to, uh, to find fairly regular in the moth traps. And there's the heart and dart moth with the uh, blackish mark on the collar which is a diagnostic feature. There we go, it's going to go I think in a minute but there's a good a good view of it. You can clearly see the two black filled in dart like marks as it sneaks off. Always a favourite, the uh, beautiful elephant hawk moth. Absolutely a stunning moth. And here we have uh, one of the stunners of the, of the moth world, the lovely buff tip, buff tip moth. Um, ideal at disguising itself on a silver birch um, twig. Just see if I can turn it around so you get more of a facial view. A really classy moth. The one that you'll uh, Get in your garden, can do in the moth trap, fairly regular, but a master of disguise, a buff tip. So, uh, purely for beginners, uh, let's just talk a little bit about moth identification. And this is a, a really good example of a, a well marked, uh, fresh uh, dark arches. So, the things that you need to be knowing, you need to know everything you can about the, uh, the anatomy of the, of the moth. Uh, and the uh, the descriptive terms that are used in books uh, for you to sort of really get a, a good grip on moth identification. So I don't know whether this is going to work, but we'll give it a try. So this part here of the moth, this long part of the wing down here on the outside, is called the costa or leading edge. Right, and the back end here 
of the wing, the end of the wing is called the termen. And then the inside of the wing, of this forewing, is called the dorsum. Right? Now, these are, are, are very common, well known terms within the uh, within moth books but try and you know analyze and look at moths uh, when you've actually got them um, on either a piece of paper or in your, your egg carton and have a, a look look at the the um, the legs is there any color on the legs is there any color on the uh, antennae and then look at the oval um, this, these marks here the oval and the kidney marks try and look at every little detail of the moth very similar to birding, you would look at every, all the primary feathers and everything and you need to know um, all these because then you can um, look in your book, look on the internet uh, to find out uh, what your, your moth is that you're struggling to find out. Just a little, well, tip from me really, just my view totally, right, it's so easy nowadays just to simply take a photograph of a moth that you don't know put it on Facebook, on the groups, of uh, identification group, and somebody will come along and say, oh yeah, that's a so-and-so, blah blah, job, job done, uh, done. But you're not really learning much at all, right? So, you know, I, I, I urge people not to do that until the last minute. Really, really try and scrutinise the moth for yourself, right? Yes, you're going to have um, heartache, uh, and then you're going to pull your hair out. In fact, I had a really good head of hair before I started moths and now I'm, I'm as bald as a coot but I have learnt about moths so joking apart try and go on the internet uh, you know the, uh, the Facebook sites at the last resort and people will help you that's brilliant and I would advise you to do it however have a go yourself first really scrutinise that moth look in your book find out all the, the identification marks of the moth so We've now um, identified our moths, so what are we going to do with them now? Um, what, we, what I always do is just release them and I'll just show you how I'm going to release them. Um, I usually choose a dark area of the garden, which is this is, where, oh, one's off, um, where there's no, uh, not many birds get to and things on that line. Uh, and they'll fall deep down into the vegetation. So it's just simply a matter of getting really deep down the vegetation and just a gentle check like that. So that the moths fly down, make sure make sure you've got them all, all out and final check. And that's done. So we've opened the moth trap, we've identified the moths we've safely released them into a, a dark area of the garden so that they're going to be safe. So the one thing that I haven't done today, which I would normally do, is to record my, my moths. Maybe even measure some of the ones that have been a little bit uh, hard to identify. And the reason I would be recording them is because it, it is vital to, to record the moths so I can pass that information on for conservation. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring another video out, so uh, check my next video out because it's going to be about uh, biological recording and that is really, really important on any species, whether it be uh, Lepidoptera, uh, entomology, anything, animals, birds, I'm a bird of myself, so it's anything, right? So check that out. Uh, but the, the, the main thing I want to leave you with today, hopefully you've got something out of it, you've learned some of the tips I, I, I've, I've given you, uh, and you're going to enjoy uh, uh, moffing because it's, it's a brilliant hobby, and you will, be, you will be hooked. So I shall see you in the next video, uh, and I'm off now. Take care, see you later, bye.